evening, everyone. Welcome to First Graduates Camping Gown 2023. My name is Diana, and I am an eighth grader at James Denman Middle School. This is my sister, Jasmine, a seventh grader, and we're both part of First Graduate. Buenas noches y bienvenidos a Camping Gown 2023, the first graduate. Mi nombre es Jasmine y estoy en el séptimo grado en la escuela James Denman Middle School. Ella es mi hermana Diana, en el grado 8. Y las dos somos parte de First Graduate. I learned about First Graduate when I was 11 years old. They came to my school and talked about college, different careers, and how they helped me with everything. And I thought, I'm going to sign up. And here I am. I want to study to become either a doctor or a scientist because I love math and science. My goal is to help people in the future. I know it'll be hard, but I know I could do it, especially with first graduates' help. I love making art, drawing, and painting, but I think I'm going to do that as a hobby. So I'm hoping to learn about different opportunities. We've been on field trips to companies and we're learning about possibilities and ideas and we should be successful. In seventh grade, we did the roadmap project, which is a unit where we plan our future. This project involved pu public speaking, which was very nerve wracking, but prepared me for this moment. The roadmap and the high school visits helped me understand the choices I have. I went on many high school field trips will help me decide what kind of school would be best for me. I am nervous about taking tests in high school, but I'm very organized with my studying, so I think I'll be fine. Our parents encouraged Jasmine and me to be part of first graduate. My mom says that what she wants most for us is to have the opportunities she didn't have. You need to throw yourself into something to experience it before you say you don't like it. We're giving this opportunity everything we have. Thank you for supporting First Graduate and us. One day we'll be able to support future generations. Thank you. Thank you, Diana and Jasmine. We'll be cheering you on to college every step of the way. Uh, <laughs> good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Gopa Desari, and as the uh, chair of this year's Cap and Gown Benefit, it's my uh, pleasure to welcome you all this evening. It's so great to see everyone back in this room again. It took us a team effort to get here, and I want to take a minute to acknowledge the staff and board members that helped us put this together. So I'd like to thank Tuka Almamori. Um, sorry, I'm pulling up a list of names here because I'm terrible at memorizing these. Brittany Decker, USA Gonzalez and Mendez, Amy Gragnolotti, Eric Guico, Dan Schmid, Mubina Sheikh, and John Spencieri. Thank you all. Let's have a round of applause for these guys. Now I ask you to join me in welcoming Greg Kuroga, who's our stellar auctioneer for this evening. He's gonna walk us through some very important items. I got walk-up music. That never happens. I got walk-up music, how good is that? Thanks, Gopa, it's good to see. I wish I'd known, I would have done a dance. It's good to see you. It's good to see all of you. Wow, you are a big crowd. It is good to see you all. And, and look, this is a special night for first graduate, but it is especially special. Uh, I'm an auctioneer, I repeat myself, I'm sorry. It is especially special for our students. Becoming a first graduate takes hard work, takes commitment, dedication, and heart. There was a woo, and I'm with you on that. Each of our first graduates here tonight and throughout the program, they prove that, that they have the drive every single day. Becoming a first graduate also takes a team. And tonight, you are team first graduate. Welcome in. You're part of the team. <laughs> now, 
When the time comes to stick with the sports metaphor, we want you to play. We want you to get in the game. You all have paddles at your spots, and that's great. Don't bring them out now, but when the time comes, be prepared to do so. If you haven't yet, look through the catalog. Check out the auction items. We've got some fun stuff in there. It'll be good, but most importantly, for the duration of the program. Every time you hear a story, every time you meet a new student in First Graduates program, remember that is one amazing person doing everything they can to make sure that they realize their potential and they're being enabled by all of the work that you are here tonight. So welcome, we look forward to it. What we got next, Kova? We'll see you very shortly. Um, so now it's my pleasure to introduce our MC for this evening, a first grad alum from our very first cohort, Alex Lazo. Welcome to Cap and Gown 2023. Bienvenidos a todos a esta celebración muy bonita. Sorry, I'm going to get myself settled here. I heard my name over the PA system called in seventh grade at Patrol Hill Middle School, and I thought it was, I was in trouble. So curious to know, I made my way to the second floor um, and into this classroom, which I think was a math class. Um, inside stood two strangers, Ines Barbosa and Tom Ahn. That day, they pitched the idea of being the first in my family to graduate from college. They mentioned words like after school program, summer program, scholarship, mentorship, and of course, college. But I could never imagine that it would lead to this night, the night that I get to host this event as the MC. Thank you. So a little bit about, my, about myself. Uh, my name is Alex Lasso, and I am part of a first graduate's founding class, FG1. Um, and before we continue our program this evening, I'd like to share a few memories and reflections uh, on my journey to, to being here and becoming the first in my family to graduate from college. I vividly remember my brother summoning me to my grandmother's house, her living room, in 1998 in El Salvador. He embraced me with tears in his eyes, and he said, you're leaving for San Francisco tomorrow. His words have profound sadness. His, eye did not, his eyes did not lie. He then instructed me that I would speak about this to no one as I was getting ready for my last day at my elementary school. At the age of 10, I learned about the concept of migration, and I lived through it. Left Behind was a national history that I will have to learn abroad through an international bias of Salvadoran politics and with a foreign voice. In front of me was a transnational identity that I will have to adapt while fighting violent stereotypes about my culture in US public schools. Like many stories, mine begins with, of course, my parents, my mother Elvia and my father Israel. They met in El Salvador in the 1970s. My father, who passed away from cancer during my second year of college, was a construction worker. He lived in a small town right in the countryside. My mother, who's a woman of many traits, um, held jobs as a, as a cook, a dishwasher, babysitter. She's still around, by the way. House cleaner and cotton picker. They both share something unique, a lack of education. My mother attended first grade and uh, had to drop out uh, at the age of eight or sixth grade, or six, sorry. She started working to support her siblings. My father, who was raised by a single parent, dropped out at sixth grade and began working as well. Their hard work paved the way for me to be here, okay? I want to acknowledge the fact that I'm able to tell my story because they dare to be brave in a world with a system designed to keep them down. Now that you have a little bit of background in who I am, uh, let me tell you about First Graduate and the amazing people here. They're all around this room, by the way. There's 
uh, our first graduate staff. Make sure that you have a conversation with them. Engage them in that conversation. And you will learn and hear the importance of first graduate. You will hear about the endless hours spent on a high school and college application at the first graduate office. You will hear the countless parent meetings held at the FG office to talk about FAFSA and, of course, how to appeal the financial aid offer. You will hear about a transformative college tour that took us from San Francisco to Los Angeles over a week. Man, first time, it was amazing. First Graduate is not only a program that helped me graduate from college. It's a program through which I found a calling. For the past 12 years, I've established myself as a community-oriented educator. I've contributed to educational uh, initiatives as an analyst, high school teacher, curriculum designer, advisor, and when I was a first graduate, as their middle school manager. More recently, I had the pleasure and honor of, of contributing as an administrator at the Bay School of San Francisco. I wore different hats over the last five years as an assistant director of admissions and a co-teacher of a ninth grade humanities course that focused, of course, on immigration, U.S. politics, and society. I love immigration, talking about it, and politics, that's my thing, so. I'm honored to step into a new role this year, um, this summer, as an inclusion and access specialist and program director of Jumpstart. I'm also two months away from uh, completing my master's degree at San Francisco State University. Go Gators, I, I saw a few of you here. <laughs> Woo! And uh, I am currently working on my thesis. I haven't done a lot of work this week, but <laughs> I'm currently working on it. Um, the title of the thesis is called Beyond the Narrative, Uncovering Why Salvadorans Migrate Regardless of Who's President. And I, <laughs> right, I wanted, I wanted to just take this quick moment to, to acknowledge the fact that these are results, these are the direct results of being part of First Graduates. You will hear that tonight, okay? We have amazing staff, we have an amazing college uh, speaker in a little bit, and this is a direct result of persons like Terry, uh, persons like Ines Barbosa, who's not here. Um, so I just want to take that moment to acknowledge that. I have seen how First Graduate has covered uh, those educational gaps that exist in U.S. public schools. Um, I experienced how I had access to someone who knew me very, very well, um, who could write a profound college rec and college recommendation, right, to get a scholarship, who could ensure that I took the right high school courses so that I could be UC eligible, and who was there the many times that Alex decided not to show up for a for summer program or for after school program and almost got kicked out. Uh, they never gave up on me. And that's true, by the way. Um, I recall in 10th grade when my advisor at Leadership High School stressed the importance of drafting a college essay during a fall semester. Well, guess what? I did that the previous summer at first graduate. I wrote my personal statement, uh, which I ended up submitting to UC Santa Barbara, UC Davis, UCLA, Sonoma State, SF State, and finally the school that I enrolled at as an undergraduate, UC Santa Cruz. Go Esmeralda! <laughs> so let me tell you this, FG is more than a college access program. It's a family you have outside of your home. It's a place to be vulnerable in a place where doors are open, okay? Doors are open in this place throughout your journey, okay? And you start building very strong and meaningful relationships with adults. FG, our first graduate, is a social endeavor social justice endeavor. As we gather here this evening, I also want to know the fact that there are so many uh, first and family students out there right now, okay? Currently in first, second, third, fourth grade. And they need this program. They're just waiting to hear Marcel, our, call, our middle school program manager, present about this program, okay? They're out there. First graduate changed my educational journey and in the process, set a strong foundation for our beautiful daughters who are home right now having dinner. My family and I will be forever grateful for First Graduate, amazing staff, kind volunteers, and everyone involved in transforming the lives of students like myself and future generations of First Graduates. I wish I had more time to tell you more about First Graduate. Let's, let's talk afterwards. Um, but I also want to take a moment to, uh, to recognize our founder, Andy Payson. I want to say thank you to Anne Eve for making the dreams of first graduates a reality. 
for being brave and for having the vision of a more equitable world. It is now my pleasure to welcome First Graduates President Ryan Baum to the stage. Ryan will introduce our First in Family Award honoree. Thanks, Mom. Um, all right, thank you all, and thanks, Alex. Man, they, they, that, I am humbled every time I hear one of our students speak, and even to get the pleasure of having one of our students be the MC for tonight, what a gift that is. So thank you so much, I really appreciate that. And you know, it is, uh, it's really difficult being first at something. You all were probably first at something, right? And just think about the difficulty and then think about how, how much more difficult that thing becomes when it is something like, something massive like going to college or graduating from college. It's to, we, we just heard from Alex and Jasmine and Diana and all of our, all of our first graduate students who are around here, who are sitting around here tonight, you're all amazing. You're defying, the statistical odds are that if you don't have a parent who graduates from college, you have an 11% likelihood of graduating from college. And you are like an inspiration. I'm like humbled and impressed. So thank you for all the work you put in to do that amazing work. All right. So my, um, my role here tonight is to introduce our First in Family Award honoree which is Sylvia. And Sylvia is the principal and people and talent at Playground Global. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Playground Global, Playground Global is an amazing, it's a venture capital firm that takes a pretty heavy hand in actually helping the folks who, who, who they support. But really, you know, what is, what is so, what I think is, I mean, uh, the company is amazing. But here's, here's, like, here's what's really amazing. Our students get to actually go to visit Playground Global as one of, like they do, they do tours to sort of see some of the organizations in, in the area and learn what it's like to be a working person. Um, and they got to go, and I think they're all like spoiled for what work and life is like. I don't know if they learned anything about venture capital, but they all want to actually go work in an office that has a slide and a swing set and has a bunch of robots doing things like like it is it is it's outstanding. So um, but S Sylvia is um, she is a first grad. That's part of the criteria for getting this award. She's also first gen Mexican American, and a lot of if you spend any time talking to, to her, you can you can just see how sort of that that background for her actually translates as to passion for the folks who she helps and the things that she does on a daily basis in her job and in her association with First Graduate. She gives back in all kinds of ways. It is not just giving back to First Graduate, which is wonderful and we deeply appreciate, but also things like she is a, she's a part of Street Dog, which provides medical care for pets of folks who are homeless. And she engages, she doesn't just like give to our organization. She actually engages all of our students on a regular basis. And it's just so lovely to hear her talk about how, yeah, I, I got to talk to her a little bit before, right before he came up, and just hearing her talk about the connection to how, what she does in her life when she, for, for, for work, when she's actually connecting to people, people venture capital, like companies who actually need support and the way that she actually cares for and supports them, the way she cares for and supports the employees who are, she is responsible for helping bring to the company. And it, it just, it is, it permeates her soul. And it, it translates to the work that she does here with us. And so we're deeply honored to have you as our first and family honoree. So I'd like to um, welcome up to the stage, Sylvia Donahoe. Sorry, I jumped the gun. There, one thing that I did want to say is, 
Uh, it used to be the case that we gave the first in family honoree a gift of some sort. Um, and I say used to, so don't get too excited. Um, <laughs> But instead of a actual specific gift this year, what we're gonna do is, you all heard Diana and Jasmine actually actually speak this morning, we're gonna um, give $1,000 for them in their name, in your, in your name to them so that they can actually um, pay for college and things like that. So, so all right, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, this, this is a gift for me, so thank you. I. Um, and so pleased and honored to be here today. And I really want to start by first congratulating our 2023 first graduates and their families. <laughs> Tonight is one of many celebratory events for these young scholars. And a majority of first generation children of immigrants and parents from Mexico I understand the sacrifices and the challenges that you face. I myself um, had parents who immigrated here from Mexico with little to no money, a fifth grade education, much like Alex commented on, and spoke no English. And like many of our first graduates, yeah, you know, we share this 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 commonality and this this the story that unites us. My mom worked as an assembly line worker for Atari Games. That's actually how I got my introduction into the world of tech. She also worked cleaning office buildings. My dad was a butcher and worked at Costco. And so they had very blue collar jobs and performed hard labor. And they didn't come to this country with much of an education or, or wealth, but what they came to this country with was hope and a dream that the sacrifices that they were making for myself and for my siblings would lead to a path of opportunity and a better quality of life. This is the story of most immigrants and children of immigrants. And as a first generation graduate and the oldest in my family, you know, I struggled immensely in school. I felt academically inferior to my American classmates. I didn't have the luxury being the first in my family, to have parents or siblings to help me with my schoolwork, much less studying. And many people in my life actually don't know this fact, but I also had a learning disability and a speech impediment. And so as I saw my classmates progress and, and learn, I felt isolated and lonely. And it was thanks to a teacher, an educator, that advocated for me and I was able to, to enter into a therapy sessions and, and actually help me overcome those learning disabilities that I started to progress. But what I still lacked at home was support and discipline. Because my parents didn't have the continued edu education, there wasn't that mechanism in place to help support me to continue to progress and do better in middle school and in high school. That's why I think this program, First Graduates, provides such a valuable avenue to helping students and opening doors. Um, I think I've I told this to Terry and, and Marcel and Oscar oftentimes and some of the students that have visited me at Playground is, I wish this would have been a program that I had accessibility to when I was in school. Because I wouldn't have struggled as much as I did 
and sure, I overcame those struggles, but it took so much time and effort and it really didn't need to be that difficult if I had had the emotional and foundational support of a program like this. I mean, I got through school, okay, not, you know, passing grades, I did well. I was smart, but I still lacked that learning desire. I hadn't unlocked my full potential. And it wasn't until I got into about my junior, senior year in high school that I, I really, things shifted for me. You know, I, my friends, I, I grew up in East San Jose, so unlike a lot of the students here that are from San Francisco, I, I grew up in, in East San Jose. And, you know, I was struggling with, with identity and, and with culture. You know, many of my friends at that time were getting into gangs. You know, they were experiencing, you know, experimenting with drugs, um, fighting. It just, you know, I knew that that wasn't the path that I wanted for myself. And I knew that wasn't the path that my parents, who had sacrificed so much to come to this country, wanted for me. I didn't want the challenges and the adversity that they were facing to be in vain. I wanted to do better. I wanted to be better for them, for myself. And so I felt this great sense of responsibility to them. And in high school, I met two of the most influential educators in my life, my American history teacher, Mrs. Phillips, and my Latino club teacher and sponsor, Mr. Garcia. And it was through them that I finally unlocked that learning desire and that desire to be more knowledgeable about what opportunities were ahead of me. They taught me that life was going to be hard for me, that as a minority and as a child of immigrants, you know, statistically, we are not set up to succeed. But with hard work and determination and investing myself and, and, and my efforts into continued education, that I would be able to advance and overcome those obstacles. The one thing about children of immigrants and immigrants is, you know, we, we grow up faster and we have more responsibilities. And I think a lot of students and, and, and folks, I see Alex nodding his head, can, can relate to this, but I remember as a kid having to go with my parents to their doctor's appointments, to translate for them, and I still do that today. <laughs> Um, but really, I, I would enroll myself into school because my parents still didn't speak English and, and, nor read or write it. So I enrolled myself into schools. I would enroll my brother, my sister. I would attend all of their parent-teacher conferences. I felt a great responsibility for them so that they wouldn't struggle in the same way that I had. And unbeknownst to me, because like everything in life, you come full circle. That was all training. I didn't know this at the time, but filling out all those business forms, tax forms for my parents, that was like a real life MBA program that I was in. <laughs> I was training and being prepared for the career path that I have today. And if it wasn't for the amazing people in my life that supported me, like my, my, my teachers who advocated for me to, 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 to have therapy to help me with my learning disability, 
um, for my high school teachers and educators who push me to do better, to, to pursue a career, to, to go to college, I, I wouldn't be here. And I just think it's such an amazing opportunity that first graduates have here, that they have people like Terry, Oscar, Marcel, Eric, that are so passionate about giving back to their community that, you know, I, it, you, you all are a blessing. And if people haven't told you that before, I, I really want you to know that you, that you are appreciated and that you are loved. And as you leave here today, I want our, our students, our first graduates, to remember that you can achieve greatness. You have already overcome so many obstacles and adversities to get to this point. And your hard work and your determination will continue to pay for it off in the future. So I ask that you go out into this world, that you use your voice, that you advocate for yourself, that you not hesitate to share your ideas. When you get to college, remember that you earned and you deserve your spot there. When you get to that corporate world or job or whatever profession you are in, know that you also deserve to be at that meeting table and room. A thing that I think a lot of us as, as children of immigrants and immigrants face is sometimes we're, we're too humble to a fault. And I, I'd love for our students to come away with this knowing that don't let that humbleness hold you back, that you have a voice and you should use it. And that will open up opportunities. Don't be afraid to ask for help and for mentorship. The, this, this night in itself is an opportunity for you to network and make connections. And I can't stress enough how important that it's, it's a skill to network. <laughs> I can't stress enough how important that it's going to be for you, not just through your journey through academic and academia, but also through your professional career. Take the time to meet people, to talk to them, to share what you're passionate about, and, and ask you know, if you can have their contact information and, and, and reach out to them. More often than not, people want to help and they want to support you. I'd also ask you, you know, embrace, embrace your culture, embrace your future, and don't forget where you came from. Remember to give back to your community because your community gave back to you and invested in you. And celebrate all of your accomplishments with pride and honor. It is my distinct pleasure to be here with you today and, and have this platform to share my story with you. And I really want to wish and congratulate all the graduates now and in our future, the best of luck in their journey ahead. So thank you all. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Um, as I heard you speak, I was connected with everything that, that you were sharing about your story. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, and now um, I, I want to share, uh, actually, we're going to watch a short video right now of one of my favorite students who in high school was, an ama he had amazing talent, actually. Uh, he's a magician. So hopefully, if you see Stephen, ask him about that. So right now, uh, first graduate alumni, Stephen Chen, please enjoy your dinner and watch this video about him. Thank you.
Success to me is flexibility. First graduate has always been a major part of making sure all their students are successful in terms of flexibilities. Knowing that going to college opens up a lot of doors allows us to decide from a multitude of different career paths. I'm Steven, I'm a user experience designer at Google and I'm part of First Graduate's 10th cohort, also known as FG10. I currently live here in San Francisco with my girlfriend and two really awesome dogs. My parents moved from China to the United States before I was born. They wanted their children to have more opportunities than they did back home in China. The thing I really love about them is the bravery they had doing that. So First Graduate is a program in San Francisco that targets uh, students whose parents have not gone to college. They are the first in their families that will probably be attending college. Most of us come from low-income families. We are public school students. Many of us, our parents don't speak English, and so we lean on First Graduate to kind of get us to college, help us graduate from college, and then find a meaningful career. In middle school, First Graduate's setting up students to be academically successful, making sure we're getting ahead math, science, digital literacy courses. First Graduate was really big on bringing us to a variety of different activities like Career Day, where they actually bring us to different offices. Even visiting the Google Mountain View campus when I was in eighth grade, we got a chance to meet with Googlers. Very nice, super energetic. That's an environment that I see myself in. In high school, that kind of transitions to after school tutoring, especially since our coursework starts becoming more rigorous. During your junior year, one of the things that First Graduate does is take you on a trip to actually visit colleges and meet with current students that are there that were also First Graduate students. First Graduate helps us with things like prepping for the SATs or the ACTs. It was worth it, it paid off, because I think I literally improved my SAT score by like two or 300 points. So Michael was my high school advisor. Reading all my personal statements, he helped me apply for financial aid, grants, and scholarships. Staying with me till like 8 p.m. at the first graduate office and then even giving me a ride back home. I didn't get into some of the schools I wanted to go to that were smaller and out of state. I looked at all my options and thought, okay, UCSD has a program that is kind of along the lines of what I want to study, and it was one of the best decisions I made in my life. One of the things that was very different for me was the change in pace of academics, and I was struggling. First Graduate had something called the Coach 3.0 program, and so they connect you with a mentor. The person that First Graduate connected me to was Eddie, a designer. Not only did he give me a lot of, you know, really helpful advice on how to organize my classes, study habits, he also gave me a lot of advice on like how to start breaking into the UX industry. The last place I interned during college was at Google. And then eventually I ended up getting a full-time offer at Google. You know, I remember actually sitting in my room two days before I was supposed to finish my undergrad and signing my offer letter to start two weeks after I finished my undergrad. The thing I really love about work at Google is I'm meeting a lot of people that I'm going to learn a lot from. It's something that I'm really proud of and also really thankful for. My sister and I, we attended preschool together, elementary school together, middle school, high school, and the same college together. And then she is now in the same uh, discipline as me. So she is also in user experience. My girlfriend and I met at UC San Diego. Now we live together here in San Francisco in Twin Peaks. Recently, I also convinced Rochelle to switch into the tech field. Eventually, I'm hoping to save up money so I can buy a home for my parents. It was all those opportunities that First Graduate provided for me when I was younger that helped to get me here today. It's incredibly important to support an organization like First Graduate. It takes the efforts of a tremendous organization to actually help students like myself. Being able to pursue work in tech, that's something I've always wanted to do. And so, yeah, I do feel like I have the life I chose for myself, and I think that's what success is for me.
I wanted to know that while not all of our graduates could be present tonight, it is my great pleasure to ask the graduating high school class of 2023 to please stand, please. High school of 2023. One high school graduate, Kiara Petch, is here to tell you about her journey. Kiara? My name is Kiara, and I'm about to graduate from Abraham Lincoln High School. I heard a panel of speakers talk about first graduate when I was in Everett Middle School. I knew right away that I wanted to be part of the program because I wanted to go to college. Going to college has always been my goal, and it's what my parents want for me, too. They didn't know how to get me there, but first graduate does. My parents were so excited when I was accepted into the program, and they have encouraged me to get support whenever I need it. Some of my best memories so far are meeting after school twice each week, reviewing plans for high school, and then college. It's great to be in an environment where everyone has the same goals and we have the mentors to help us achieve them. Middle school and high school are stepping stones toward college. Being on this journey with peers who are all on the same journey is wonderful. We're a community that is growing together. While I love to dance and choreograph quinceañeras, my dream is to study math in college. I have already taken all the math courses in my high school and have moved on to college math. Calculus too. <laughs> I applied to 16 universities and I have been accepted into 11 and will be <laughs> and will be attending Santa Clara University this fall. My career dreams are to focus on business administration or financial advising. I want to create a good life and come back to first graduate and help students like me. First, <laughs> first graduate provides so many opportunities to learn about different careers and per for personal growth. And support is always there when you need it. All of you who are here tonight are making it possible for students that don't have resources to seek a higher education. We show others that it is possible to succeed and make a better life for our families. Thank you. Thank you, Kiara. And on that note, it is time for our auction. And of course, before we can have an auction, we have to get just a couple of guidelines in place. So. Uh, hey, Lawrence, can you guys dim the spots by like 15, 20%, please? I'm having a hard time seeing tables in the back right now. Awesome. Thank you. We'll see if that works. I can see you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Excellent. I appreciate the verbal recognition. Call and response, always a good place. Let's try it with paddles. Can, can you see me and then raise your paddle in response? Excellent. Good. Remember that gesture. See how tough that's going to be? That's, that's going to be tough. Remember that gesture. Anytime the next few minutes are hanging out together, you lose sight of what to do, just resort to that. Each and every time you do, you are going to be a hero or a heroine for the students we are here to serve at First Graduate. Now, the second guideline. Obviously, this is not a controlled environment. Mistakes are going to happen. If and when I'm the one who makes one, I'm always going to reopen the auction lot in favor of first graduate. Anybody that has a problem with that can walk down the hill at the end of the night. 
Two people laughed. Oh, well, I was going to say we'd take away dessert, but you've already been served dessert, so ha uh, ha ha. Third and final guideline is this. Bidding is just like smiling. Somebody does it to you, you're supposed to do it right back to them. The person who does it most, but most importantly last, they win. Let's start the auction tonight with lot number one. A night out with the music of Miles Davis in San Francisco. Two people enjoy an evening enjoying one of San Francisco's greatest artistic and cultural institutions, the San Francisco Jazz Center. Friday, May 26th, you're going to get to experience Miles from India, part of a limited three-night run exploring and celebrating the music of Miles Davis. This particular concert features a full ensemble of Indian musicians, explores the Indian instrumentation used by Miles on his classic 1972 fusion album, On the Corner. Start the evening with dinner at Zuni Cafe, a San Francisco icon in its own right. We're starting the auction thanks to Susan Knowles. Appreciate you, Susan. We'll start the auction tonight at $150 in go. Looking for $150 for the night on... Okay. So the spots are definitely going to have to come down even more then because people who at the tables who are bidding where the spots are are totally invisible. Hey, I see you now. 150 we've got. Now two. Go two. Bid two. 200 now 250. 250 and three. 300 now 350 and four. 400 now 450. 450 and five. 500 now 550. Go 550. Bid 550 and 550. $500 is bid now looking for 550. Go 550 and six. Go six. Bid six now six. 550 is bid now looking for six. 600, welcome back. Now 650, go 650, bid 650, 650, and seven, go seven, bid seven, now seven, $650 is bid now, looking for seven, go seven, bid seven, and seven. You're in at 650, you don't have to bid yourself up, but hallelujah, that is the spirit. 650 is bid, now looking for seven, go seven, bid seven, and seven. 650 is bid now, looking for seven, go seven, bid seven, and seven. 650 is bid, looking for $700, time everyone please at $700, and sold. $650. And then the all-important, now is the time to show me your paddle. What was your paddle number? 211. Thank you. 211. Lot number two. Escape to Blue Rock Vineyards for a private wine tasting experience. Six people enjoy an intimate and exclusive wine country excursion. Make your way to Blue Rock Vineyard in the heart of Sonoma's Alexander Valley, where vineyard proprietor and winemaker Kenny Kahn will welcome you in, give you a personalized tour of the estate, share the history of the estate, the vines, even the olive trees, give you a tasting of all of his wines, and then join you for a three-course lunch paired with even more of his wines. We'll start the bidding on this at $700 and go. Looking for... You're, you're waving or you're just excited. I'm with you. We're excited. Seven, looking for $700. <laughs> I told the spotters I was very motion activated. And, <laughs> and there's proof positive. Looking for six people. Let's see. Uh, wine tasting, lunch, and drinks. That's, I'm not good at math, but I'm going to guess that that's like $112, $115 per person. You could charge your friends more. They'll never know. $700 we've got. Now eight. Go eight. Bid eight and eight. $700 is bid now looking for eight. Go eight. Bid eight and eight. $700 is bid now. 800 and nine. Go nine. Bid nine. Now, it was a sympathy bid. I totally understand. 800 is bid now looking for nine. Go nine. Bid nine. Now nine. $800 of 900. Now a thousand. Go a thousand. Bid a thousand. Yes, a thousand. $900 is bid now looking for a thousand. Go a thousand. Bid a thousand and a thousand. $900 is bid looking for $1,000. Yes, no, maybe so. Fair. 1,011. Go 11. Bid 11 and 11, $1,000. Auction attendees of a certain age will get this joke. It's a spinal tap moment. This one goes to 11. This one goes to 11. $1,000 is bid now looking for 11. Go 11. Google it, kids. Now 11. Go 11. $1,000 is bid looking for 1,001. Fair warning. And we're done to bid $1,100 and sold. $1,000. What's your paddle number? Gopa. Gopa. 152. Thank you. 152. Lot number three. 
relax at the Silverado Resort, revive and glow in the Bay Area. This is a chance to treat yourself to some wellness. Thanks to Millennium Career Advantage, Marvell Allen, first graduate board member. Thank you, Marvell. Let's start with the Silverado Resort, the largest resort in Napa, full spa, two championship golf courses. You've got enough on the gift certificate to enjoy two nights and three days midweek in one of their vacation condos. One bedroom, full kitchen, plenty of room for up to four people, full access to the resort, spa, three pools, tennis courts, the restaurant overlooking the course, and did I mention the two championship golf courses? Plus, Rosemary Arida Kuiper, first graduate, first graduate board member, wants to make sure that you are pampered back here at home. Thank you, Rosemary. Six facial treatments at Rituals Aesthetic Skin Care in San Mateo. Plus, you get six mani-pedi sessions at the New Zen Spa in SF. And to take home tonight, a gift basket loaded with over 15 skin care products from Sonoba Lavender Lounge, Lemieux Skin Care, and more. And... This just added, Home Yoga, our neighbor on 16th Street in the Mission, has donated five passes for yoga classes. We'll start the bidding on this at $1,200 and go. $1,200, $1,200 we've got now, 13 is bid, 14 yes now, 15. Go 15 and 16, 16, and 17. Go 17, 1,600 is bid now, looking for 17. 17 and 18, go 18, bid 18 and 18, 18. Now 19, 19 and two, go two, bid two, now two, 2,000. Now 21, 21, and 22. Go 22, bid 22, and 22. 2,100 is bid now, looking for 22. Go 22, bid 22, and 22. 2,100 is bid. You don't have to share the Manny Petties unless you really want to. 2,100 is bid now, looking for 22. Go 22, bid 22, and 24. Go 24, bid 24, and 24. 2,200 is bid now, looking for 24. Go 24, bid 24, and 24. 2,200 is bid, looking for 2,004. Looking for 2004. Go one more now, bid two four now, 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 go one more to bid four. I'm buying you time for this conversation. Now go one more now, bid two four now, go one more to bid two four. Fair warning to bid $2,400 and sold. $2,200 to 347, to 347. Where's Violet? Hi, Violet. Lot number four. Joint Violet. You can go. Oh, he almost, we almost dumped you, right? That was, that, that, how did your chair disappear like that? You're more than welcome to come up on stage if you want to, Violet. Lot number four. Join Violet Witchell for a day in an influencer's kitchen. And, or shall I just say, have a cooking class with a renowned chef. Right? Four people. Join Violet Witchell for a cooking class unlike you've ever seen before. Make your way to Vi Violet's Bay Area home slash studio where she's going to welcome you in, give you a tour of the mothership where she performs for over 2 million fans on TikTok and over 258,000 followers on Instagram. Violet, renowned for her healthy, easy to prepare, and yet somehow still incredibly delicious meals, is going to treat you to a charcuterie pairing, a, to a, a charcuterie paired with wines to kick things off before showing you how to prepare an incredible meal, give you, the give you the recipe to take home, and then you make the meal, and then sit down and enjoy it paired with wines, thanks to Mark Hamilton, and you maybe even get to be made internet famous in the process. I, I, I just said it's paired with a case of wines, thanks to Mark Hamilton. I wasn't going to bury the lead, Mark. We appreciate you. We, I'm with you. We'll start the bidding on this. You got to pick a number and go somewhere. So let's start at five hundred dollars and go. Five hundred we've got now. Six, go six. Bid six. Six hundred it is. And seven, go seven. Bid seven it is. Now eight, go eight. Bid eight. Now eight. Eight hundred and nine, go nine. Bid nine. Nine hundred. Now a thousand, go a thousand. Bid a thousand. A thousand and eleven, go eleven. Bid eleven. Now eleven. One thousand dollars is bid. Now looking for eleven, go eleven. And twelve, go twelve. Bid twelve. Now twelve. One thousand one hundred is bid. Now looking for twelve. 
12, and 12, go 12, bid 12, 1,100 is bid now looking for 12, go 12, bid 12, 1,200, now 13, go 13, bid 13, and 13, 1,200 is bid. Now, I'm not trying to give away trade secrets, but I'm pretty sure product placement for 2 million TikTok followers is way more expensive than where we are right now. 1,200 is bid, now looking for 13, go 13, bid 13, and 13, 1,200, <laughs> or maybe you don't want to be internet famous, and just go cook and have a good meal, and that's permissible too. 1,200 is bid now, looking for 13, go 13, 13, and 14, go 14, bid 14, 13, 14, and 15, go 15, bid 15, and 15, 1,400 is bid now, looking for 15, go 15, bid 15, and 15, 1,400 is bid, looking for 1,005, looking for 115, and 16, go 16, and 17, go 17, bid 17, 1,600 is bid now, looking for 17, go 17, bid 17, and 17, 1,700 is bid, now 18, go 18, 18, and 19, go 19, bid 19, 1,800 is bid now, looking for 19, go 19, bid 19, and 19, 1,800 is bid, look, 19, and 2, go 2, bid 2,000, now 21, go 21, bid 21, and 21, $2,000 is bid, now looking for 21, go 21, bid 21, and 21, $2,000 is bid, now looking for 21, go 21, bid 21, and 21, $2,000 is bid, looking for $2,100, time everyone please at $2,100, and okay, okay, Beth, and you, more importantly, because you're the bidder, but Beth's the one writing stuff down, so I wanted to make sure I got her attention. Uh, Violet and Mark has agreed to a second case of wine. Violet, so we're doing two. So what was your paddle number, sir? 176, $2,000. 196, $2,000. Thank you, Violet. And thank you, Mark. Where do you go from there? I don't know. How about the Warriors come out to play? Lot number five. Enjoy the VIP Warriors Dynasty package. Four people enjoy VIP access to the Golden State Warriors next season, right? I mean, you know, let's be realistic here. The game is to be determined, and that's because the schedule hasn't been released yet, obviously, but when that game is determined and you have picked it, make your way to the Chase Center. You're going to have a VIP parking pass. Mark Hamilton has arranged a VIP tour of Chase Center for you. And I'm not making any promises, but bring a phone with a camera and a Sharpie, right? I mean, just, just, just be prepared. Then head on into your own theater box. It's a private box with large, comfy, theater-style seats, think recliners, steps from the theater box club, the shared upscale premium hospitality suite that comes with unlimited high-end food and bar access. But why, why, why on earth would you leave your seats when you can have the all-inclusive dining experience served right to you, included in the whole package. Be sure to get there early. You are not going to want to miss Steph's warm-up routine. It is the most entertaining pre-game warm-up in all of sport. Plus, plus you get this basketball that has been signed by the entire team for this year. One of these signatures one of these signatures is Clay Thompson's, and I know that because it's also on this jersey. It says Game Six Clay. No, actually, it says says four-time NBA champions. But we all get to see Game Six Clay tomorrow night. We'll start the bidding on this at two thousand dollars and go. Looking for two thousand dollars. Look. The, the hospitality club alone, 2,000 is bid now, 22. Go 22, bid 22, and 22, 22, and 24. Go 24, bid 24, and 24, 24, and 26. Now 26, 26, and 28. Go 28, bid 28, and 28. 2,600 is bid 
now looking for 28. Go 28. Bid 28 and 3. 3,000 now 32. Go 32. Bid 32 and 32. 3,200 is bid now 34. Go 34. Bid 34 and 34. 3,200 is bid now looking for 34. Go 34. Bid 34 and 34. 3,400 now 36. Go 36. Bid 36 and 36. 3,400 is bid now looking 36 and 38. Go 38. Bid 38 and 38. 3,600 is bid now looking for 38. Go 38. Bid 38 and 38. 3,600 is bid now looking for 38. Go 38. Bid 38 and 38. 38 and 4. 4,000 now 42. Go 42. Bid 42. 42 and 44. Go 44. Bid 44 and 44. 4,200 is bid now looking for 44. Go 44. Bid 44 and 44. 4,200 is bid now looking for 44. Go 44. Bid 44 and 44. 4,200 is bid looking for 4,004. Looking for 4,004. Fair. 44 new bidder. Welcome in. And 46. Go 46. Bid 46. And 46. And 48. Go 48. Bid 48. And 48. 4,600 is bid now looking for 48. Go 48. Bid 48. And 48. 4,600 is bid now looking for 4,008. Looking for 48. And 5. Go 5. Bid 5. Now 5. 4,800 is bid now 5,052. Go 52. Bid 52. And 52. 5,000 is bid now looking for 52. Go 52. 52, bid 52, and 52. $5,000 is bid now looking for 52. Go 52, bid 52, and 52. $5,000 is bid looking for 5,200. Now 55, go 55, bid 55, 55, and 58. Go 58, bid 58, and 58. 5,500 is bid now looking for 58. Go 58, bid 58, and 58. Fair warning, one and all, but especially you at $5,800 and sold $5,500 to 399 to 399 Whew. Thank you Megan for playing proxy Law number 6 Taste the bounty of Sonoma County and we hear a lot these days about farm to table. And we all obviously get to sit at the table and eat quite a lot. But when was the last time you actually went and visited a farm? Eight people. Make your way to Gold Ridge Organic Farms in Sebastopol, where Brooke Hazen, the son of the founder of First Graduate, is going to welcome you in and give you a VIP tour of their 88-acre farm that provides olives, olive oils, apples, and citrus. And their olive oil, world famous, recently featured on the Today Show. You'll get a chance to get up there and find out why. See what organic farming looks like in real life. Better yet, taste it. And you get to take home a box of produce and treats. Then, once you're back in San Francisco, two people enjoy a bread-making class at the mill with Josie Baker Bread. Going to teach you how to make any number of amazing breads, including their black pepper parmesan, maybe the roasted onion everything, adventure bread, big country bread, your choice. You get to bake your bread and eat it too. We'll start the bidding on this at $800 and go. Looking for $800, tour the farm, bread making class, $800 we've got now, $900 it is, and $1,000, go $1,000, bid $1,000, now $1,000, $1,000, now $11, go $11, bid $11, and $11, $1,000 is bid now, looking for $11, $1,112, go $12, bid $12, now $12, $1,100 is bid now, looking for 12 and 12 go 12 bid 12 1100 is bid now looking for 12 and 12 go 12 bid 12 1100 is bid looking for 1002 looking for 1002 fair warning one and all to bid $1200 and sold $1100 to 337 to 337 lot number 7 the Napa Wine and Dine Getaway. Four people. Enjoy an exclusive wine and dine getaway to Napa. Make your way to downtown Napa where you're going to stay at the Archer Hotel boutique feel in the heart of Napa Town. You'll have two rooms for the night loaded with amenities in an amazing location. Steps from the riverfront and Oxbow Market. Easy walking to all of the shopping. But the real treat 
you'll be able to walk on over to Ackerman Family Vineyard's Ackerman Heritage House, where Lauren Ackerman has lovingly restored a historic Victorian into an incredible setting for entertaining. You ought to get a tour of the house, then sit down for a gourmet lunch paired with wines from Ackerman Family Vineyards and plenty of time to explore the rest and best of Napa Town that evening. We'll start the bidding on this at $1,000 and go. Looking for $1,000. $1,000 we've got, now $1,100, $1,200, now $1,300, and $14. Go $14. Bid $14 and $14. $1,400 in the back, now $1,500 and $16. Go $16. $16 and $17. Go $17. Bid $17 and $17. 1,600 is bid now, looking for 17. Go 7, 17 and 18. Go 18, bid 18, 18 and 19. Go 19, 1,800 is bid now, looking for 19. Go 19, bid 19 and 19. 1,800 is bid now, looking for 19. Go 19, bid 19 and 19. 1,800 is bid, looking for 1,009. Looking for 1,009. Fair warning, one and all at $1,900 and sold. $1,800 to 232. To 232. Lot number eight, Fleet Week. Chris Rammer's in the house. Where's Chris? Captain Chris, thank you. Six people. Enjoy the ultimate Fleet Week air show from the best seats in the house this coming October. Retired Fire Captain Chris Remmer is going to welcome you aboard. Am I getting that right? Is Remmer or Reamer? Thank you. Retired Fire Captain Chris Reamer is going to, well, you know, that's a name you want to get wrong the other way. No offense, right? Chris Reamer is going to welcome you aboard his 34 foot Catalina sailboat, take you out on the bay to enjoy Fleet Week. Parade of ships in the. Uh, in the works on this. You can watch the parade of ships from up close and personal, maybe even work your way into it. Enjoy a gourmet lunch paired with fine wines. Thank you, Mark. As you jockey for position to watch the entirety of the air show from as close as you can legally and safely get. Be so close you can see the pilots' face shields as they're coming down for their low passes. Feel the jets of water they bring in the air. Be sure to bring your best camera. <laughs> it better be an SLR. We'll start the bidding on this at $1,000 and go. Looking for $1,000. $1,000 we've got now. Eleven. Go eleven. Bid eleven hundred and twelve hundred. Now thirteen hundred and fourteen. Go fourteen. Now fifteen. Fifteen and sixteen. Sixteen and seventeen. Go seventeen. Bid seventeen. Seventeen and eighteen. Go 18, bid 18, now 18, 1,700 is bid, now looking for 18, now 19, 19, and 2, go 2, bid 2, and 2, 1,900 is bid, now looking for 2, and 2, go 2, bid 2, 1,900, 2,000, now 21, go 21, bid 21, and 21, $2,000 is bid, we're still below Groupon pricing right now, $2,000 is bid, now looking for 21, 21, and 22, go 22, bid 22, and 22, 2100 is bid now looking for 22 go 22 bid 22 and 22 2100 is bid now looking for 22 go 22 bid 22 and 22 2100 is bid looking for 2002 looking for 2002 what you going to do now bid 22 now what you going to do now bid 22 now what you going to do now bid 22 what you going to do now bid 22 fair 22 and 24, go 24, bid 24, and 24, 2,200 is bid now, looking for 24, go 24, bid 24, and 24, 2,200 is bid now, looking for 24, go 24, bid 24, and 24, 2,200 is bid, looking for 2,004, looking for 24, and 26, go 26, bid 26, and 26, 2,400 is bid now, looking for 26, go 26, bid 26, and 26, 2,400 ever inoxorably upward, I know. 2,400 is bid like my waistline. Now 26, go 26, bid 26, and 26. 2,400 is bid looking for $2,600. Time, everyone please, and sold. $2,400 <laughs> to 162, 162. You look laughingly surprised. <laughs> Lot number nine. Our final lot of the night, watch the Giants from right behind home plate. And again, thanks to Mark Hamilton, whose fingerprints are all over the auction this evening. Four people. 
Enjoy the best seats in the yard to take in a Giants game this coming fall, thanks to first graduate board member Mark Hamilton. You know those people you see on screen behind the catcher and the ump every pitch? It could be you. It could be you. You can enjoy the most amazing view of baseball. Hear the conversations between the catcher and the batters. See the actual curve of the curveball. Marvel at the speed of the game. Enjoy incredible amenities, private entrance to the park, at seat weight service, and more. And it's changed. It just changed because the catalog says that you've got three series to choose from. It was originally the Cubs, the A's, and the Dodgers. And the Dodgers series in September has all of the makings to be, uh, you know, season deciding, because it always does. But Mark just said, hey, if those series aren't what you want, pick the game of your choice. We'll make it work. Could be next year. So, you know, the catalog still holds true. Want to see the Dodgers? Go Giants. Want to see a different series? Talk to Mark. It's a different game from a different series. Sorry, one game, one game. Start the bidding on our game at $800 and go. Behind home plate. $800 we've got. $900, $1,000, $1,100, $1,200, now $13. Go $13, now $14, $14, and $15. Go $15. $15 and $16, $16, and $17. Go $17. Bid $17. $1,600 is bid now looking for $17. $1,700, now $18. Go $18. Bid $18. $18, now $19. Go $19. 19, bid 19 and 19. 1,800 is bid now looking for 19. Go 19, bid 19 and 19. 1,800 is bid now looking for 19. 19 and 2. Go 2, bid 2 and 2. 1,900 is bid now looking for 2,000. Now 21, go 21, bid 21 and 21. $2,000 is bid now looking for 21. Go 21, bid 21 and 21. $2,000 is bid looking for 2,001. Looking for 2,001. Fair warning, and we're done to bid $2,100, and <laughs> everybody got super excited. Sold $2,000 to 313, to 313. That brings us to our final fundraising act of the evening. And not to say that you are a wild and raucous crowd, but it is the one time when I would ask if you could please shh. And if you want to pop the spots back up, now would be a good time. First graduate empowers individuals to achieve their potential. It's a program that works because it engages students early in their academic careers, teaches them to dream big, and shows them how they already have it in themselves to work hard and accomplish great things. As soon as a student starts middle school, in San Francisco. First graduate is there. And I know this as a parent because when my kid was at James Denman Middle School, the very first day of school, we were all introduced to first graduate. And I was like, hey, I know you guys. It's a program that works and it survives because of your support. In just a few moments, you are going to have the opportunity to support first graduate simply by making donations. We're going to go through a variety of levels. We'll start high at $10,000. We'll work our way down. I guarantee we'll find a place where capacity and commitment align for each and every one in this room. Every pledge you make will have a direct impact on the life of a student striving to become the first graduate in their family. First graduate students accomplish so much during the 12 years they commit to getting into and through college, and our next speaker exemplifies that amazingly. Please join me in welcoming Esmeralda Barrios to the stage. My name is Esmeralda Barrios. <laughs> um, I'm very excited to be here today uh, and tell you about my first graduate journey. I am a senior at UC Santa Cruz, graduating this spring and on my way to receiving a bachelor's in psychology and a minor in education. <laughs> yeah. 
I wear many hats, and I do it for my genuine interest in helping others. I am a full-time student, a part-time research assistant, a part-time behavioral therapist, a part-time legal aid intern, and a full-time advocate all around. <laughs> I know what you may be thinking, why and how. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I just can't ever say no. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, I have so much love and appreciation for a, first sorry, for a first graduate and all they have done for the young community here in San Francisco. Since I was young, my education was something I always prioritized. I think it's because I saw how much of an obstacle it was for my parents. Both of my parents were unable to get an education due to financial barriers. So growing up, I saw how much, of an, how much their inability to read and write interfered with their daily lives. To me, their struggles served as a motivator that pushed me to want to do well in school and help others who also had barriers in their lives. Like everyone else in the program, I entered first graduate when I was in middle school. And as I reflect on how I began my journey with first graduate, I realized how young I was. I was 12 with the dream of being able to attend a four-year university. Of course, I knew nothing about how I would get there, but I did know it would allow me to have a secure future. That's what FG meant to me. They gave me a sense of security and stability to guide me through my college journey. As a first generation college student, it was hard navigating the university world. There is no playbook that tells you how to apply to internships, how to network, how to write a resume, how to get involved with research, etc. And although my parents support all my hopes and dreams, they couldn't help me in this aspect of my life. Therefore, I was so grateful to have FG in my corner. They not only supported me through middle school and high school, but they taught me all of those skills and helped me apply to about 10 colleges, eight of which accepted me. <laughs> Thank you. UC Santa Cruz was where I wanted to go and almost didn't go because I thought it would be too expensive to attend. After conversations with advisors at first graduate and some financial planning, I decided that UCSC was where I would go. Now here I am, three years later, graduating a year before I was supposed to. <laughs> Thank you. I aspire to go to graduate school and continue my educational journey. I want to continue to do research and change false narratives that are placed upon marginalized communities. I also want to leave you with the message. Students like myself should never feel like they can't continue their educational journey because of the cost. Students should feel that they can accomplish their dreams and desires to make an impact in their communities. So I would, like, I would love <laughs> to thank First Graduate and the various advisors that built bridges for me to be here in front of you all. Because of you and First Graduate and my parents' support, I know I will be able to achieve my dreams. Thank you all for being here. <laughs>
to support that, those stories, individuals. And, and we're going to start high, unless somebody wants to start higher, but we're going to start at $10,000. And what $10,000 could cover, and now would be a good time to dim the lights again, if you guys don't mind, so I can see the back of the room. What $10,000, thank you, could cover is applications to college for 30 students. And you think about how daunting the college application process is. It's also expensive. And first graduate helps cover those costs to make everything about getting into college possible. Who will contribute $10,000 tonight? Three, two, one, $10,000. One, four, seven, ten thousand dollars. One, nine, six, ten thousand dollars. Did I miss anyone else? Those are the two things happen whenever I say that. A, people laugh. B, everybody gets really quiet. And see, occasionally somebody donates $10,000. And first graduates, this is a lesson. You only get what you ask for, so ask for it all. Okay, then $7,500. Our next stop is $7,500. $7,500 will fund professional one-on-one -on -one tutoring for our high school and college students. Who will donate $7,500 tonight? I was told somebody wanted this level. It's an awkward level, but I was told somebody <laughs> wanted it. They stretched to 10. Hallelujah. We appreciate you then. Then five, $5,000 will fund 300 hours of free coaching for one student for one year. Talk to any, most of the first graduate board members. They are involved and they understand what the coaching does. The students do as well. Who will contribute $5,000 this evening? One, seven, six, five thousand dollars. See, it gets really quiet. Except for them, they're having a good time. You go, young one. Then our next stop is $2,500, and $2,500 could fund a transition to college retreat for our graduating high school seniors who are here with us at Cap and Gown. They all stood earlier. The retreat is for about 30 students. It's a milestone event because it's the last chance they have as a cohort to interact before they go off to college. But also, it's an opportunity to experience what going off to college might feel like. Who will contribute $2,500 tonight? One, five, two, 2,500. <laughs> three, one, three, 2,500. Two, six, two, 2,500. Do we miss anyone else who wishes to contribute $2,500? Ooh, that was well-timed. Almost like we planned it. $1,000 will fund laptop computers and hotspots for four students. It's crucial that they have the technology they need to succeed. Every class these days involves being on electronics and having access to Wi-Fi. Who will contribute $1,000 this evening? Two, three, nine, one thousand dollars Three, one, eight, one thousand dollars Three, two, seven, one thousand dollars Two, seven, eight, one thousand dollars one three six one thousand dollars two eight two one thousand dollars one four three one thousand dollars two one 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 thousand dollars one two two one thousand dollars one five two in again one thousand dollars one nine eight one thousand dollars three four three one thousand dollars Do we miss anyone else who wished to contribute $1,000? Really quiet back there. $500 covers the cost of career-related summer workshops and events, food, facility rental, other materials. Who will contribute $500 tonight? 
in again, $500. Did anyone, anyone, anyone else wish to contribute $500? Then $250. $250 funds family intro dinners to set students and families up for success and first graduate, help them understand the journey to come. Who will contribute $250 tonight? 281, 250. 217, 250. 336, 250. 310, 250. 208, 250. 144, 250. 241, 250. 328, 250. 329, 250. 238, 250, 151, 250, 254, 250, 224, 250, and 1, 2, 6, 250 dollars, 207, 250 dollars. Two, three, nine, two hundred and fifty dollars. Do we miss anyone? Then our final stop. Our final stop is $100. $100 will cover transportation costs for our ninth graders to participate in our annual summer career day. You heard on the video how, it, what an, how impactful it was to go to Google and get to see the campus there. This is a, the day where all the ninth graders get to visit companies throughout San Francisco and be exposed to various professions. Incredibly impactful. Who will donate $100 tonight? 334, $100. 256, $100. 210, $100. 118, $100. 214, $100. 285, $100. 340, $100. 308, $100. 321, $100. 308, we got. Are you in a second time? No. Okay, just one. I'm just here to enable you. Whatever it is you want to do, I'm here. In the Did we miss anybody who wished to contribute $100, $10,000, anything in between? Then give yourselves a big round of applause. You all raised over $60,000 just now. And that's, that's the end of the fundraising portion. It's been my honor to be back to be here with you again. As always, it's not over. Alex is coming back. But I just want to say that when you go, wherever you go, please remember to get there when you get there to continue to use your powers for good. Now, Alex, take us home. Thank you so much, Greg. Um, our goal is to set as many students to college as possible. So many of you raised your paddles to give tonight, and we thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Um, please talk to students, and they'll thank you forever. Um, in case, however, in case uh, you didn't have a chance to do that, there's still time as to leave tonight um, to support First Graduate. And believe me, it feels good to uh, come back here um, and do a, a small donation to, to the program that 
saw me grow and saw me be the person that I am today. So um, thank you so much for doing that. I want to thank our event committee, our board, um, our staff, our parents and students, our sponsors, our volunteers uh, for being here this evening. Thank you for supporting and encouraging our students and for sharing our vision of creating a San Francisco that provides access to equitable education for all. Together, we are changing students, which changes families and communities, which changes cities, which can change the world. Thank you for believing as we do. In the words of our prior honoree, David Kerb, every child deserves what you want for a child that you love. Good night. Thank you so much for everything.